Beneath the serene waters of the Pacific Northwest lies a sleeping giant, a fault line capable of unleashing one of the most catastrophic natural disasters in human history. The Cascadia Subduction Zone, stretching from northern Vancouver Island to northern California, is a ticking time bomb. For centuries, immense tectonic forces have been silently building, compressing, and twisting beneath the ocean floor. When this pressure finally erupts, the resulting megathrust earthquake will be nothing short of apocalyptic. Scientists warn that this event isn't just likely, it's inevitable. A colossal magnitude 9.0 earthquake, followed by a towering tsunami, threatens to obliterate Washington, Oregon, and parts of British Columbia and Northern California, and alter the Pacific Northwest forever. Yet, despite mounting evidence and dire predictions, many remain unaware or unprepared for what lies ahead. Today, let's delve into the looming threat of the Cascadia Mega Seaquake, unraveling its terrifying potential. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Located approximately 100 miles off the Pacific Northwest coast, the Cascadia Subduction Zone spans about 620 miles from the northern reaches of California through Oregon and Washington, and ending off the coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Theoretically, the significant seismic event known as the Big One could occur anywhere along this fault line. This subduction zone marks the boundary where the Juan de Fuca Plate is being subducted beneath the North American Plate. This process of subduction has been ongoing for millions of years, building up immense tectonic stress. The Cascadia subduction zone has a well-documented history of generating massive earthquakes. The most recent megathrust event in the region occurred in 1700. Geologists estimate that this earthquake had a magnitude of approximately 9.0 and generated a massive tsunami that traveled across the Pacific, devastating Japan's coastlines. Historical records from indigenous oral traditions and sedimentary evidence of coastal subsidence have corroborated the occurrence of this event. Scientists studying the Cascadia Fault's behavior have determined that it produces megathrust earthquakes roughly every 300 to 600 years, placing the region in the latter half of this interval. The geological mechanics of the Cascadia subduction zone are uniquely suited to produce catastrophic earthquakes. Unlike strike-slip faults such as the San Andreas Fault, which primarily involve horizontal movement, subduction zones involve one tectonic plate sliding beneath another. This vertical movement creates the potential for massive displacements of the seafloor, which in turn generate tsunamis. The Cascadia subduction zone is divided into several segments, each capable of rupturing independently or in combination. A full rupture of the entire fault line would release immense energy, likely resulting in one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded. Modern seismic research has provided critical insights into the dangers posed by the Cascadia subduction zone. Advances in technology, including GPS monitoring, ocean bottom seismometers, and paleoseismology, have allowed scientists to map the region's tectonic activity in unprecedented detail. These studies reveal that the subduction zone is not continuously slipping, but rather locked, accumulating strain over centuries. This locked state is what creates the potential for a sudden and catastrophic release of energy. Slow slip events, where tectonic plates temporarily move without generating large earthquakes, have also been detected in the region. While these events release some stress, they are not sufficient to prevent a megathrust earthquake. In fact, some researchers believe that slow slip events could even act as precursors, subtly altering the stress distribution and potentially triggering a larger rupture. Researchers from the California Institute of Technology have computed that the southern segment of the fault line is the most probable location for the next major earthquake. This would place the likely epicenter off the coast of Northern California up to Central Oregon. Regardless of the specific location along the fault line, the entire region would be affected. At the very least, major cities such as Eugene, Portland, Tacoma, Seattle, Everett, Victoria, and Vancouver would all experience some level of impact. 
The Federal Emergency Management Agency is working under the assumption that everything west of Interstate 5 will face complete destruction. It is estimated that over 10 million people across nearly 100,000 square miles will be directly affected by the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, and the proximity to the epicenter will determine the extent of their impact, not only during the earthquake, but for many years thereafter. A Cascadia megathrust earthquake would unleash devastating forces across the Pacific Northwest. The initial shaking could last for several minutes, far longer than most people are accustomed to experiencing. Structures not designed to withstand such prolonged seismic activity are likely to collapse, causing widespread casualties and damage. High-rise buildings in cities like Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver could sway violently leading to partial or complete structural failures. One of the most immediate and life-threatening consequences of the sea quake would be the tsunami it generates. Within minutes of the earthquake, a massive wall of water could surge toward the coastline, traveling at speeds exceeding 500 miles per hour. Low-lying areas along the coast, including towns like Cannon Beach, Newport, and Crescent City, would be inundated. The tsunami could penetrate miles inland, sweeping away homes, infrastructure, and anything else in its path. Warning times would be limited, leaving many residents with little chance to evacuate. In addition to the immediate destruction, the long-term consequences of a Cascadia megathrust earthquake would be profound. Transportation networks, including highways, bridges, and railways, would be severely disrupted. Ports and airports, critical for commerce and disaster response, could be rendered inoperable electrical grids, water supplies, and communication systems would likely be compromised, leaving millions without basic services. The economic cost of such a disaster is estimated to reach hundreds of billions of dollars, with recovery efforts stretching over decades. After the seismic activity subsides and the tsunami withdraws, the extent of the devastation in the region will become evident. Coastal communities will essentially cease to exist, and major cities, particularly Portland and Seattle, will be obliterated. Presently, projections indicate that along the I-5 corridor, it will take anywhere from one to three months after the earthquake to restore electricity, a month to a year for the re-establishment of drinking water and sewer services, six months to a year for the restoration of major highways, and 18 months to bring back healthcare facilities. Along the coast, one can essentially double all these recovery timelines. Naturally, these estimates do not apply to the tsunami zone, which will essentially be uninhabitable for years. The entire Pacific Northwest region will undergo a profound transformation after the significant earthquake. And while the federal government is likely to cover the entire reconstruction expenses, the economic damage to the Pacific Northwest will necessitate a generation to rebuild. A substantial portion of the population will likely relocate and never return. Major corporations and businesses, including Microsoft, Amazon, Nike, Intel, Boeing, and other economic powerhouses for the region, will likely relocate to other parts of the country and may never return. The Cascadia Megathrust earthquake is often compared to other large-scale seismic events, such as the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. This magnitude 9.1 earthquake devastated northeastern Japan, causing nearly 16,000 fatalities and triggering the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Despite Japan's advanced earthquake preparedness measures, the scale of the disaster overwhelmed the country's resources, highlighting the immense challenges faced by even the most well-prepared nations. Similarly, the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami which killed over 230,000 people across multiple countries, underscores the need for effective early warning systems and coordinated international responses. These events serve as sobering reminders of the destructive power of megathrust earthquakes and the critical importance of preparation and resilience. The Cascadia megathrust earthquake is not a question of if, but when. The geological forces that drive this fault line have been building toward a catastrophic release of energy for centuries. When that day comes, the Pacific Northwest will face an unprecedented challenge that will test the resilience of its communities, infrastructure, and governments. But there is a silver lining, 
the Pacific Northwest still has the opportunity to prepare itself. In fact, the region may have a century or more to prepare. While the scale of the disaster may seem overwhelming, proactive measures can mitigate its impacts and save lives. Investments in seismic safety, emergency preparedness, and public education are critical to reducing the region's vulnerability. The lessons of past disasters, both in North America and around the world, provide valuable insights into what works and what does not. The time to act is now. Delaying preparations for the Cascadia earthquake puts millions of lives at risk and jeopardizes the future of one of North America's most vibrant and dynamic regions. By acknowledging the threat and taking decisive action, the Pacific Northwest can confront this looming disaster with courage and resilience, ensuring a safer and more secure future for generations to come.